Live well, win well. It's on point with Wanda Lynn Stokes. Right here, News and Talk, 1380 WAOK. A pleasant good morning to our guest, uh, King Kevin Dorval. A pleasant good morning to you. How are you today? Hey, morning blessings. It's a great day to be alive. How about yourself? Oh, it is a great day to be alive, and I'm so glad we are. <laughs> Thanks for sharing Amen. with us and taking the time out to uh, speak to us from your heart and and with where you are with your demand for a, a lot of policy changes. You know, it's just getting old hearing promises, but not really seeing changes taking place. Now, you're the author of books uh, that are demanding policy changes toward Haiti, such as The Winner in the Mirror, Activating Your Superpowers, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Tell us about where you are with demanding policy changes. Right now, we're getting ready to uh, kick off the Black Legacy Tour, um, which is going to uh, be st- starts starts May 27th, uh, this Friday in Chicago. Um, that's going to be the first stop on, uh, to stop the ongoing war with Haiti, America and France's economic collusion. Um, that's been going on since 1650 to the year three. We'll continue to the year 3000. We don't do anything. Um, so that's where we are with this. And then after that, um, I go to Oakland, California, uh, Tampa, Miami, and, and now Atlanta. And and what is the what is the focus of the tour? The focus of the tour is to galvanize the people to get those who care about black people. Um, you know, the white supremacy has been successful in dividing us and uh, and, and separating our identities instead of understanding that we all are African, we all are black. Particularly um, in this case with Haiti, the fact that these inhumane policy changes. Um, towards Haiti has crippled the economy, has crippled the, the people's spirits and hopes in Haiti to the point where they are leaving um, Haiti in a mass exodus. Now, the, the, now the, the bottom line in this tour is to gain, to gain the support the international community, not just the Pan-African community, but the international community to, 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 to care and to help support um, our efforts in getting to the White House lobbying in D.C., lobbying in the, the, the local governments here from Georgia to, to wherever um, in order to get some of these changes made. You know, we're going to reach out. We've been reaching out to the National Black Caucus um, headed by Maxine Waters, the Congresswoman of California. We have talked in getting into the U, U.N., the United Nations, um, and presenting the same presentation there uh, along with the African Union. Um, the African Union did not allow Haiti to be part of the African Union. We want to know why. When Haiti has uh, over 90% of, of Haiti are, you know, people of African origin. So um, being the first independent black nation in the Western Hemisphere and the first and only successful um, slave rebellion in the world, in world history, you know, it, that has never happened, possibly would never happen again. Um, but Haiti has been paying a hefty price since um, 1804 for fighting for the liberation, the first original freedom land. So we can get the support um, from, from, from those caring people like you. Thank you, WAOK, uh, Wanda, for letting me on the show. But we can get people to support our, our GoFundMe that we just launched. You can find it on my social media. It's on my Instagram and Twitter. Um, or go to my website, kevindorver.com, um, or go to GoFundMe and, and, and look up the ongoing war with Haiti, and you will see how you can support, because we need the lobby. There's no more, um, me, per, um, me personally, as you can see, I'm very passionate about this, mm-hmm. um, other than serving the community. We are, as a Haitian myself, I consider myself African Haitian. Um, we are tired of these handouts, these, you know, giving away um, money and clothes, et cetera, et cetera. Haiti has some of the strongest uh, willpower in the world. We have very strong, hardworking people. But the way that the United States, especially the um, Haitian-American Treaty from 1915, um, when they occupied Haiti um, under President Woodrow Wilson, they crippled the Haiti's economy by stealing the, the funds from the Haitian National Bank. They stole $11 million in gold from the Haitian National Bank, money that was supposed to be used to develop the country. And then they had President Aristide um, sign a document, secretly sign a document, in order for him to come back um, from exile. If he's going to come back in the country, 
Penn signed a document stating that he would not seek subsidies for education or the development of the country and to allow um, Bill, Clinton, under Bill Clinton's administration to allow them to import U.S. goods into Haiti with no tariffs, which means no taxes. So the money for taxes is supposed to be used for education, the developing roads, hospitals, emergency situations, et cetera, et cetera. The United States and France together, every step of the way, has undermined the Haitian government. So, mm -hmm. so we are tired of looking at the news and seeing Haiti as being poor, destitute, or um, people that um, they can't take care of themselves. They have, it, it has been created that way. And so we, we're fighting for what belongs to Haiti. You know, we are fighting for what we deserve. Haiti is not the poorest country in the hemisphere, despite what the media promotes and teaches. If you do your research or read any of my blog articles on my website, kevindorval.com, you would, you would see, and, and I have the sources from different uh, credible sources, New York Times, Washington Post, different um, um, research companies, that Haiti is actually one of the richest countries in, in the Western Hemisphere, possibly the world. Haiti mm -hmm. has mountains, mountains full of iridium. Iridium right. is the strongest metal in the world. They use it for spaceships, guns. It's, it's heat. It's heat resistant for one. They use it for tanks, um, spark plugs, et cetera, et cetera. So if the U.S. can continue exploiting these goods from Haiti and robbing the land of its golden or uh, buying up all the land mm -hmm. um, that has all these natural resources without paying no taxes, thanks to the Clinton Foundation um, and and uh, several other companies that. These funds are supposed to be used to help the country. So at every step of the way, Haiti, we we just we just uh, paraded or protested against George Floyd being choked by the police. All right. Haiti has been choked by the U.S. and France and international um, powers that be since uh, 1650. They've they've been they've had a chokehold on Haiti for centuries, and no one is doing anything about it, anything substantial. So I'm calling now everybody, all hands all day. If you care about black people, if you care about Haiti, especially Haiti, black people in Haiti, African people in Haiti, the ones that fought for the freedom of for all for everyone, all of us, the first original freedom land. Mm -hmm. Let me say something. Haiti also, for those who don't know, and Frederick Douglass lived in Haiti for three years, and he promoted Haiti um, extensively. You know, um, he he promoted Haiti. He was also the um uh, uh, what do you call that again? The uh, not administrator, ambassador to Haiti for three years. He lived in mm -hmm. he was getting ready to move to Haiti before the Civil War. He loved Haiti so much and he was promoting to the black community to come move to Haiti. This is a beautiful land. It's gorgeous. It's, it has a lot of opportunities and it's black owned, black power. Now, if your ancestors in Georgia or wherever was able to escape to Haiti from the plantations, slave plantations, you were automatically set free. A lot of people don't know that. Haiti is a regional freedom land, and we need we owe it to our ancestors to fight back. Yes, we do. Live well, win well. It's on point with Wanda Lynn Stokes right here at News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Uh, there's been a lot of talk and conversation, uh, even as we've shared with you about our concerns about Haiti and how uh, the U.S. has responded in the past year, especially during that earthquake. And even when you compare and look at the efforts that are made to Ukraine, uh, and of course, concerns there being an imbalance and not giving the support uh, uh, to Haiti that we certainly need to. Uh, King David, I've got Patricia on the line, and she has a question or comment for you, okay? Go ahead, Patricia. Yeah. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Mrs. Stokes, and hello. Um, Hi. I, just, I had a question regarding um, the recent killing of the prime minister there, because I understand I'm of uh, African descent, Caribbean African descent also, but I just cannot understand. Can he just speak to the crime that was committed there recently? Why are our people, how can anybody appreciate us if we're not appreciating ourselves? And from what I saw in the news, this is the only place I can get the information. It didn't seem like it was anybody else other than Haitians involved with killing their own prime minister. Can you please speak to that? Thank you. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks for calling, Patricia. Uh, King David, go right ahead. Yes, 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 and that's uh, 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 King Dorval. Um, 
Let me, let me let's say this. In to answer that question, the assassination of the president, even more importantly. Now, what we're looking at right now is is the fire. But who who set this fire in Haiti? Who set the conditions that would allow uh, missionaries from Colombia to come and assassinate the president? Now, there's, now there's, there's many speculations on on who's involved and why they did it. But the only way that anyone can come into a country freely and to assassinate the president of a country, it had to have been highly organized. Now, they already know that the mercenaries screamed out the name CIA. This is the CIA. They let them come straight in. The Haitian president's security didn't even fire back or hesitate to let these supposedly CIA officials come in to, and to kill the president. Now, the U.S. sets the fire, calls the firemen, and the U.S. represents the firemen. They create the fire, call the firemen, and, and who are the, themselves? Now, I don't know why would they kill the, the prime minister, but right now we're looking at the symptoms. We need to get straight to the problem of what's causing the chaos in Haiti, which is in, anywhere there is this organization, there's guaranteed to be a lot of problems. Is this organization in the, the, the social system, this organization in the educational system, and obviously the government? All of this has been created by France and the United States, and it's been generations, it's been building for generations. This is just something that just happened all of a sudden. So I, just like black on black crime, why you have so much, uh, so much black on black crime in Atlanta, in the major cities, Chicago, which I'm going to, in different parts of the U.S. or, or any parts of, of Africa? The reason why you have this is because there's limited resources. When people are starving and hungry, they're going to do anything to survive. Haiti is at a, at a survival mode. They can't even think about tomorrow. Everything is today. I just sent some money to Haiti yesterday to some, some of my family members who are not necessarily starving, but they are, they are very much so struggling on a day-to-day -day basis. Nothing is operating. The government can't even govern itself, let alone govern the people. But as long as the United States has the iron hand upon Haiti with the, the 1915 Haitian American Treaty, uh, for example, or having presidents sign documents to make sure they undermine any type of development or education in Haiti. So as long as the U.S. and France and Canada and, and these other foreign powers have a heavy hands on Haiti, Haiti will continue to be the same position that it has been for the past 10, 20 years. So we have to do something about it. We have to cut and dismantle and eradicate these policies that are crippling the country economically. The only reason why Pan-Africans here in, in Atlanta and throughout the U.S. are comfortable is because we have a government that's being held accountable. Haiti can't say that because that's not happening there. And Haiti is not going fix to it, fix itself. The Pan-African community, this is not a Haitian problem. Let's, let's get this mm -hmm. clear. This is not a Haitian problem. This is a black problem. This is a Pan-African problem problem. For some reason, the African Union turns back on Haiti, which I'm still trying to figure out why. But they claim because Haiti is not an African country when not over 90% of its inhabitants are directly from the motherland. So this shows me that the, the, the African Union is not ran by African countries. They literally, it's a facade run by Europeans claiming to be off of Africa, but really it's the Europeans calling the shots. So and that's why I'm here. I don't have all the answers, to be honest with you, for everything and all the problems that's going on in Haiti. But I do know this. If we can change even something as simple as the rights policy in Haiti. Mm -hmm. when, General Tuss when General Toussaint, the leader of the Haitian Revolution, when he led the people to beat France, Britain, and Spain during the height of slavery, while our ancestors were throughout the U.S. and Caribbean enslaved, Haiti was free because of General Toussaint Louverture. And he knew, even back then, that we had to be able to trade with other countries. So he said that the prosperity of Haiti will be based on our agriculture. He says that repeatedly in the book called The Black Jacobins, written by T.L.R. James. Awesome book for those who haven't read it. Now, fast forward. Today, Haiti can't even grow its own rice. You know where Haiti gets its rice from? You're talking about a Caribbean island. A fruitful Caribbean island with some of, the, some of the best soil in the world grows the mangoes year round, on rice, sugar canes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As a matter of fact, when it's grown in sugar, it, it, it produces 80% of the world's sugar. 
a tremendous amount of money was made in Haiti. With today's rice, Haiti had to import, it gets rice, a subsidized rice from Arkansas, where their pit is from. He made sure that Haiti won't be able to grow his own rice to flood the land with cheap bleached rice, which increased diabetes in the country. He had all this rice imported, subsidized rice, so that the farmers of Arkansas become wealthy and the farmers in Haiti are ran out of business. So they can't compete with this with free rice. How are you going to compete with that? And this rice is killing the people, and they can't even grow their land, and that's why there's an overflow, an influx of people in Port-au-Prince. And you have all this chaos because all the, the, the farmers, Haiti is a, is a farmland, and the farmers can't even make, can't even grow their own rice or make money growing rice. Mm-hmm. Same thing mm-hmm. with the pigs. They slaughtered all the Haitian pigs claiming they had Asian swine flu. Over a million pigs slaughtered in Haiti. Wait, what did they do? They brought these um, U.S. pigs in claiming that this was going to help save Haiti. And these pigs died because they couldn't survive in Haiti. So you have this ever- all I'm asking for is to change the policy doing with the agriculture. Allow us to grow our own food. Right now, what's going on in Haiti is not only cruel, it's demonic. There's demonic spirits of the U.S. and France by crippling the country. They don't even want the children to even learn how to, to build their own land, build their own infrastructure, um, invent their own things. They literally undermine the educational system, guaranteeing that the future of Haiti, because children is the future, like Michael Jackson used to say, if they are able to cripple the children, they're guaranteed that the future of Haiti will be desolate. And that's the goal. They want to turn Haiti. They want to turn Haiti into a assembly line to be nothing but slavery. That's exactly what they're doing. That's the only yeah, thing they're yes. in. And then that, and that's what's happened. It's a fact. You can Google it. You can research it. Pick up a book. You will see what I'm talking about. And I'm not just talking a bunch of jazz. This is the reality of the situation. If we don't do anything, it will continue for another 3,000 years. Right, because it's just a facade acting and pretending those that are in power like they really care about Haiti and the people. But at the root of it is the economy. And the only way you're going to change it is actually uh, with some policy changes. Live well, win well. It's on point with Wanda Lynn Stokes. Right here, News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Thank you so much, King Kevin Doraval, for sharing with us today and staying over a little extra. He's the author of books that are demanding policy changes uh, toward Haiti, uh, such as uh, The Winner in the Mirror, Activating Your Superpowers, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Uh, King Kevin, I've got uh, Todd on the line. He has a question for you. A couple of questions. Go right ahead, Todd. Good morning. Welcome. Yes, hey, good morning, um, Wanderland. Hey, King Kevin. So I know just as you've expressed that Haiti's had some major trade problems with the Western nations since it's, um, since it's taken over its own sovereignty from France. I know that. However, I wanted to um, ask you this. I- explain to the public how it is a so- how it is that a sovereign nation can't grow their own rice and put it out into the open market? Um, that, that's a great question. And, and Wanda, thanks for playing that, that Kung Fu Haitian music. I, I hear it in the background. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice touch. That's Sean. Uh, yes. Talk. Yes, yes um, the great question. Now, the situation is, is the fact that the, <clears throat> the U.S. government in order to undermine and to destroy Haiti, it's, it's, it's been it's been known for a very long time that the U.S. hates Haiti since the days of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, the first and second um, presidents of, of the United States. They even invested heavily with France to um, beat Haiti to make sure that they subdued the Africans, the wildly Africans, what they called them in Haiti, and that didn't that didn't work because. Haiti obviously beat France, the world superpower of the time, um, to, to gain the independence. Now, fast forward, France forced Haiti to pay a slave tax a, um, of $21 billion for their freedom in order to recognize them as a country. The U.S. did not recognize Haiti until 1862, right before the Civil War. Why is that? Because they recognize Haiti, they also acknowledge um, Liberia, because they needed to know 
first of all, they didn't recognize Haiti because they did not want to have a, a, a similar slave rebellion in the United States. But that was too late because people like Nat Turner was inspired by the Haitian Revolution, you know. Um, and moving forward, they also recognized Liberia and Haiti in the same year in 1862 because they had to know, they wanted to know, okay, if we free these enslaved Africans, where are they going to go? So supposedly the Africans that were enslaved, whenever I talk about a slavery, I don't ever call our people slaves. I always say enslaved. So they, they were trying to think of what they were going to do with the enslaved. Are they going to ship, ship them to Haiti or are they going to ship them to Liberia? Now, the U.S. knowing that, hey, okay, whenever you go into war, you have to take away your enemy's strength. Play on their weaknesses, but play against their strength. Haiti's hey, strength is agriculture. We were, we were brought there for agriculture, and we survived through agriculture, growing sugar, rice, mangoes. Mangoes growing all year round. One of the few places that grows mangoes 10, 10 a month out of the year. Now, the U.S. knowing that Haiti are excellent rice producers, you know, Haiti at one point in time, I produced rice, uh, rice than, than, than the United States. Um, knowing that Haiti is very strong at rice, you know, we like eating decole, uh, uh, you know, decole is like a black rice. If you ever had that, that black rice, you don't know what you mean. I know what it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eat that with the legging, the sauce squat, you're you, you going to fall in love. We put a lot of culture and soul in our food. Now, now America had, to, in order to cripple Haiti and and to strategize how how to, how to get how to get Haiti to get on their knees and, and 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 beg for anything to eat, they had to take away the rice industry and the pig. So, Bill Clinton, who black people praised, and I'm guilty guilty as well, back in the '90s, he took it upon himself, and he just recently. Recently, in front of the uh, congressional hearing, recently apologized for the policies that he imposed on Haiti through the rice, because he said he didn't know that it was going to cripple um, Haiti's agriculture business, which you know that's a lie. He knew what he was doing. He, he supported the Arkansas farmers to get the cheap bleached white rice, flood Haiti with it, knowing that it's going to force the farmers, and Haiti is, what, over 50% of farming. Knowing that it was going to cause them to leave, leave the farm, leave the farmland, uh, flood the city, you know, which is Port-au-Prince, leave the, the farmland open, and while everyone is struggling for fighting for resources in Port-au-Prince, which is the capital of Haiti, this has caused a, a, a conundrum of issues by forcing the farmers off their land so they can take the land and use the land to dig for oil and gold. Now, let me say this, and the kids have said this, and, and I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, get anyone in trouble. I'm saying something very controversial. Okay. On the right. In 2010, the earthquake killed supposedly 250,000 people. Mm -hmm. It was for 225,000 people, the earthquake in 2010 um, in Haiti. And I was supposed to go to Haiti that year, but I didn't go to Haiti. I went in the going to Haiti <laughs> because of the earthquake. Now, coincidentally, less than 30 days later, in January 2010, they find over $40 billion worth of oil, gold, and natural resources, and in the, in the, in obviously iridium. Now, Who's the day that you're referencing? Say it again? Who's the day that you're referencing that found this oil and gold? Oh, the Clinton Foundation, um, Henry Clinton's brother who died, he had a mining company, I can't recall the name of the mining company, um, and Companies that are owned, mining companies owned by Canada, I believe China, definitely the U.S. Hillary, Hillary Clinton, um, brother died, but before he died, he was given explicit rights to go ahead and mine in Haiti for, for 10 years, on pennies on a dollar. Now, they actually found this $40 billion, and there's a big article, a big article about this in, in the Washington Post and New York Times. Now, how did they get this gold? How did they get, how did they find this, 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 this these natural resources? I, I'll tell you. There's the software that U.S. Marines used, the same U.S. Marines that invaded Haiti in 1915. The U.S. Marines used a a a, a software, a, a weapon called HARP, 
H A A R P. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, but Harp um, literally stands for, um, and, and, and it's very controversial, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This technology can be used to change the weather, and it has been used to shake the earth. Now, if the U.S. Had, had, had the balls to put a bomb on Japan in Hiroshima, if they were willing to put a bomb on top of the earth, what makes you think they would put a bomb under, under the earth to look for gold? Now, when they ship this, when they, when they ship the land looking for this treasure, I don't think they knew. I'm hoping they, they didn't know, but, you know, we are dealing with what Michael Metz called white devils. If they were able to know that this was going to kill thousands, a hundred thousands of black people, Africans, which we, what, they call, what they really call it with niggers that speak French, mm-hmm. if, they were, if, they, if, if they knew that it was going to kill this many people, I don't think it would have mattered to them. They shook the earth a little too much. And it caused a massive earthquake. This was not a a natural earthquake. This was a, what I'm saying is bottom line. This was a man-made earthquake. These people don't give a damn about Haiti because Haiti is filled with what they call niggers. And I hear you. Like, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah, we hear right? you. They, they don't mm-hmm. care. They don't care. And so, who said they're gonna do it again? It's always been known that since the days of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson that they hate. They hate the people of Haiti because uh, we embarrass the world superpower. We embarrass white supremacy by turning what they, they looked at us as subservient. We proved mm-hmm. to them that we were black excellence. Marcus Garvey said it himself, the father of Pan-Africanism, that there's no greater achievement or hero than General Toussaint Louverture of the Haitian Revolution. There's no greater achievement of black people in modern day than what happened in Haiti. And that is why they've been working so hard to keep their foot on our necks. And I'm here to, to do my best and what I can to get my support and hopefully people will go to my GoFundMe. Um, stop the ongoing war with Haiti. You'll see it. Go to my website, kevindover.com. That's K E V I N D S and David O R I V A L dot com. Or Instagram at Courage to Believe. Courage number two, believe, and you get more information. I'm, this is going to be, this is the, 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 the biggest project I've done in my life outside of being a father. I have my baby in my hands right now. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, well, King Kevin, uh, we certainly appreciate the work that you are doing and uh, your your website. We're encouraging all of our listeners to go. Kevin Dorival, K E V I N D O R I V A L, and render your support. You can find out more about uh, the legacy tour that he's on and making a change and galvanizing people and making people aware of what's really going on in Haiti and how we can support. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of your efforts and we'll be in touch. Thanks a lot, King Kevin Dorable. Thank you. Thanks so much, Wanda. You're more than welcome.